Here we have a picture I recently drew, brothers and sisters, of Luffy. And this is Luffy right before he's about to come out of the five chapter flashback that we've been seeing and just punch Wapple in his goddamned face. Hope you enjoy. One Piece, chapter 145, carrying on his will. Well, hello, my brothers and sisters of the nerd nation. I, as always, am Jim, here to bring you another review on the tantalizing tale, uh, sometimes saddening, sometimes happy, sometimes joyous, and uh, sometimes just uh, plain silly, Tale of One Piece. Our last chapter, as well as the few prior to that, have been primarily, uh, it would have been all flashback of uh, six years ago, and of course what's uh, gone on with uh, Chopper and Dr. Hiraluk. So uh, at the end of the last chapter, we saw Dr. Hiraluk had made it to the top of the, uh, of the mountain, of course, in the cable car, uh, thinking that the 20 doctors were sick and was coming to do the, the good thing and cure them. Uh, little did he know that it was a trap laid by Wapo just to draw him in as he has been a, a fugitive uh, for a while, as well as Dr. Correa, really any doctor that's not the 20 uh, that, that uh, of course, Wapo keeps under his command. So, uh, that, and this is also the last chapter uh, of the volume, of volume 16 over here. So we will be moving on to the next volume after this. And, and this was a cool one. Uh, it was it went by very quickly because it was just, it was a fairly, I wouldn't say action-packed, but it just moved quickly, the way the pages, you know, you just read and, and the, you turn the pages quickly. So, it, you know, it starts off and Dr. Hiraluk, of, of course, is, is up at the top of the mountain and uh, and he's like, what, what's this? And he's now realizing as he's standing outside Wapple's castle and all the doctors are out there and, and Dalton and Chess and Kira Marimo and some of the other subordinates and, and then, of course, Wapple himself. And he's like, ha, 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 you idiot, you really thought that the 20 doctors were sick and you came to help them. And, uh, and, it, and it's really kind of a touching moment because what you see is you see Dalton then go and, and Dalton kind of all of a sudden had, he immediately has like this respect for, you know, for this doctor that's that's been called the quack doctor and everything else. And he's like, if you knew it was a trap, I mean, why would you come anyway? I mean, it, you, you couldn't think that you would actually get out of this in any good way. So why would you come anyway type of thing? And that, that's kind of what he asks him. And, um, and, and it's really neat because you see the same sort of attitude come from here. Look, you know, listen, I've done wrong in my past, but, but really, you know, it's about helping each other and helping this land, helping this kingdom. And he, if he thought for one minute that the 20 doctors, even though it's wrong how Wapple does everything with them and keeps them there and everybody has to bow to him to get medicine and all that, if the 20 doctors are sick and something happens to them, now there's nobody that can cure the ailments and the illnesses and the diseases, uh, you know, of, of the drum kingdom, drum kingdom. So he certainly, he's one of those people, he's almost, it's like, it's like, it's like a patriot, you know what I mean? He's saying, hey, listen, I, I may not agree with some of the ideals and things like that of this place, or maybe even the ruler, Apple being the degenerate piece of shit that he is, but I believe in the people and, and not letting them, you know, leaving them hanging. So it's, uh, you know, so then we go and we get, you know, and, and Wapple's laughing, ha, 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 stupid, you know. Uh, we uh, During this whole exchange, we wind up seeing Chopper, and Chopper is running like hell trying to, you know, get to him or whatever, and uh, and then it cuts back to them, and, and Wapple is uh, is telling everybody, okay, get everybody get ready to aim and fire. We're basically just going to gun him down in cold blood. And, um, you know, and, and, and so everybody's getting ready to, and uh, Dr. Hiraluk goes and gives this little monologue about how, you know, when does a man die? You know, like, you can't kill me. When does a man die? When he's, uh, you know, when he, when he finds out he has an incurable disease, uh, when he gets shot, when, he, when his heart stops, when he gets poisoned, when he, you know, all these different things, he goes on and on, and he's like, no. Um, and, and what he's trying to get at is that a man dies when he is forgotten. And, uh, and a man or a woman, I guess it doesn't matter, I'm not being sexist about it here, but a person dies when they are forgotten. Um, so, you know, what he's saying is, is that, you know, you're trying to leave behind a legacy. You know, he's trying to leave behind a legacy of, of, of trying to be helpful, trying to cure people, um, and ultimately being that person who's trying to come up with the cure-all so people don't get sick and die, so people don't lose loved ones or children or pets or whatever, you know. So it really is kind of cool and it's kind of touching. Uh, and like I said, again, everything kind of moves very quickly over here. Uh, he goes and he's and, and then the doctor just kind of sits down during this whole monologue and he pours himself what looks like a shot of something, you know. And they're like, what's he doing? What's he doing over there? And then right before he goes and he, and he takes a sip of this thing, he goes, uh, he says, my, my son, he refers to Chopper as his son, uh, my son is, is going to be on his way up here and, uh, you know, please just don't harm him when, when he gets here because he's, he's going to be upset, obviously, you know, from, from what happens. It's something to that effect. And then he goes and takes the 
the sip or the shot of whatever. And it kind of, you know, they're like, what's, what's he doing? You know, and then it kind of goes and it zooms out and you just see, you know, that the top of this, you know, this, this drum looking mountain and you just see this huge explosion, you know, and at first I was thinking, what the hell, they blow everybody up. Well, obviously we know that didn't happen because six years later, Wapple and all these guys are still around. So no, he just blew himself up. He knew he was going to die. That was kind of his backup plan, his ace up his sleeve, whatever, you know, just so he would go out his way. And that's what I took from it is that he left this world in his way in his own time. He, he could have had a couple more weeks. He didn't have to go in and eat that soup, you know, to, to, to appease Chopper. He could have told him, hey, listen, buddy, I appreciate the effort, but you made a mistake. This is actually going to kill me. Um, and, and he could have, you know, but he decided to go out on his own terms, and, and I like that, and I, I respect that. Although it is very saddening and disheartening. Um, right after that, and now Chopper has gone in, in between back and forth in these scenes. He's gotten closer and closer, and he actually went and got on, you know, got to where the cable car thing is, and actually just went and started just running up the rope that goes, you know, up the side of the, 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 the mountain there, the cliff. And so he gets to the top, and of course, remember, he's still all messed up, man. His eye is so badly, we can't even see the one eye because it's bandaged over, but he's all messed up. Man, he's still got like plugs of Kleenex or something up his nose, you know, cotton or whatever. Uh, so he goes and appears at the top of the mountain, and um, and he's just like, you know, and he just, he hulks up and immediately turns into his huge thing because he sees that Dr. Herlock is dead, and then he sees Wapo laughing at him, right? So he goes to go charging in, man, just freaking, you know, just not even thinking, balls to the wall, you know? And um, and, and uh, Dalton goes, and we see him, you know, use his ox ox fruit and bison up, you know, and turn into, uh, you know, to turn into the giant bull or bison looking thing and kind of locks, you know, horns with him, so to speak, you know, and grabs Chopper and he kind of throws him down to the ground and Wapple, you know, says, you know, kill him or execute him or what have you. Uh, and Dalton goes and he's like talking to him. I just imagine him like holding him down, making it out like he's really hurting him, but he's actually just like, listen, you need to leave. I'm telling you that this is, you know, and Dalton prior to that was actually crying with everything that Dr. Herolook had said and everything else. It really, really affected him. Wapple makes fun of him for it and everything, of course, too. But Dalton, who's this true patriot as well of the country and served under this, this idiot's father, he realizes, this is where he's realizing that this country is not going to ever be, you know, great again with this ding-dong at the helm. So he's holding him down, though, and he's just like, get out of here, seriously, you know, and, he, and I can just like, picture him talking through grit, you know, he's like, if you can't beat me, they're surely going to kill you, just get out of here, you know, you know, li live on, you know, that, that type of thing, and, and that's, that's you know, I, I apologize for the king laughing at, uh, at you know, at, at Dr. Herlock's death, of course, and, um, you know, but, but you need to get out of here, so, uh, so he goes and kind of shrinks back down and everything like that and goes and, and takes off, and then in the next scene, you know, we got Wapple going, you let him get away, Dalton, you know the punishment for defying one of my orders, and I just, you know, I really dislike this little prick. I haven't gotten into it too much yet because he's really just kind of been a burr in my ass, man, you know, a thorn in my side. Uh, some irritate me more than others, you know, but he just reminds me of just this little entitled prick. He's got that Napoleon complex. He's a short little fucker, and he's just, ah, man, just, just dislike him and everything that he does. I mean, you can tell, even in the... You know, when they were at that council meeting and he pushed or smacked Vivi for whatever reason. She was like a 10-year-old kid. What in the, What's mentally wrong with this motherless son of a person? Anyway, i gotta, uh, I got to try to keep it a little more PG here, so I apologize for, for all that. But uh, he really is. He, he's somebody that really gets under your skin. And, and that's a good, in a, in a way, that's a good written character if you think about it, or even if you're watching a show or something like that. If there's a character you can see it's portrayed, you know, the, the actor or actress that's playing him, you know, you may hate that person, but you love to hate them, and they're doing their job. So, uh, so Wapple's definitely doing his job in this one as being just a real prick-like villain that nobody likes. So then he goes, and he's like... You know, he's, he's going and, and, you know, Dalton, maybe if you beg forgiveness or something like that. And then Dalton's like, hey, I'm not begging you for shit. And Dalton goes, just goes nuts, right? He's just like, that's it, you know. He goes, the only person that gave a shit and, or, or had, had enough balls to stand up and, and give a shit about this country and about this land and everything like that just blew himself up, okay? You know, and, and he's trying to, like, you know, talk to and kind of appeal to everybody there, you know, appeal to their better judgment and be like, seriously, this is what we do? This idiot that goes and... You can't rule people by fear and treating them like animals and everything else. What is your deal, you know? And um, and that's you know and that's basically what he does. He goes into this whole like you know I don't believe in in what I'm doing anymore. So um you know so we go and we see that uh, that you know of course that doesn't agree with Wapple. Wapple uh, has his his minions or maybe it's Wapple himself. I don't know you know because he says you know what the price is for defying me. So I don't know if Wap Wapple came at him if his minions if he had everybody attack. He's an underhanded piece of shit. So you know they wind up uh, Dalton winds up getting getting taken out not killed. 
uh, which of course we know because he's there six years in the in the in the present. But um, we wind up seeing him in this jail cell, and he's just like you know he's like beaten and broken, but he's just like you know I'm not going to give up. I will not die. You know. Um, so you can kind of see that he's going to, you know, his will is going to carry him through. And then it's kind of cool because after four or five or whatever chapters this has been of this, of this flashback, right, which was very cool and very touching, so it went by quickly. When we went into the flashback, Luffy had come out and seen Wappa was there and was like, hey. And then he just came up to him and he was like, gomo, gomo, boo! And it was B-U-L, right? And that's all you saw. So you know he's going for the, the bullet, right? It's so cool because like mid-page, right at the end of the chapter and end of the volume, he just comes, it, it comes out of the flashback or whatever, right? And there's Wapple, and he's just, huh? And he's just, and then it's the it's the last part of Bullet, you know, the L-E-T. And you just, you just picture, bam! <laughs> you know? So it's kind of funny because, I mean, in reality, if I had to read this when it came out, I would have to wait a month or five weeks or whatever it was to go through this flashback, you know, that you would hope you could just, you know, quickly read through as an optional thing and then get back into the action. Um, but it's really kind of cool, I think, how it was done and, and it didn't didn't bother me or take me out of anything because the backstory of Chopper was was so good. So um, I, I definitely enjoyed it. And um, and as far as, uh, I guess, just thoughts in general on uh, on the volume so far, that'll be, you know, that'll be my chance chapter question uh what are your thoughts on on this this particular volume uh this one has you know it's pretty much covered them you know them coming to the drum kingdom and, and what's happened thus far um so again weigh in on that in the comment section down below brothers and sisters uh feel free to hit the thumbs up the uh, like button if you think that i deserve it and uh subscribe if you haven't done so already we look forward to catching you in the next one nation as always, brothers and sisters, thank you for commenting, sharing, liking, subscribing. I don't know why the hell I got put on doing the outro instead of the intro this time, but oh well. Have a nice day.